way. Welcome to Bonehead. We haven't done a promo in a while. There's a reason for that. We don't have a producer anymore and it takes extra work. Yeah, but on top of that, usually you know when you sign up to watch Bonehead what you're going to get. And we're two years in. Yeah, because the, the charm is established. The, that there is no charm? The, the je ne sais quoi, if you will. I don't speak German. Anyway, moving right along. Do, so, Jen say qua. I don't know. Jen says a lot of things. Yeah, Jen. Mm. I think Jen saying is, is Jen saying is good for your health. Bobby doesn't know. Anyway, moving right along. What I want to say is that two years ago we started this show. Two years ago, a couple of weeks ago, a few weeks ago, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. And it was our two-year anniversary, and I'm so excited. We're 90 some episodes in. We've had more success than I ever thought we would. We've still talked to one another, which. I didn't know that would happen. Which is actually what this is all about. I'm going so long, this is over. <laughs> They're finally starting the cartoon episode, or a cartoon <laughs> podcast that I thought they should have done all along. No, no. No, no. We didn't get a lot of good reviews about that. We really did. But anyway, I want to say that when we started, the question I asked and the question I brought up again to Chad today, and it is the base and the crux of, the crux of our first episode, is why do you need... Three more guys, average guys, chubby guy. Well, two of us are chubby. One's fat. Does anybody talk to James? <laughs> uh, get, see, it's funny because I'm fat. So I have a thyroid. <coughs> I have medical documentation. Sir. I did not know cheeseburgers were called thyroids. <laughs> Is that a synonym? Anyway. Mm, why do you Cinnamon need... rolls. <laughs> Those do sound good. It's 11 o'clock at night. Do you no. think Waffle House is still open? What I want to say is... Why do three more people need to be talking about cult culture? And why? Oh, why? Birds why? suddenly appear. Hold on. I'll tell you why. Because we get things that other people don't suck at competition. Our guest this week is Robert Latham Brown. You probably don't know who he is. That's okay. He is what, Chad? He is a production manager. He has done some amazing <coughs> work on, on some Can, little movies that you may have not made. Well, actually, a good question would have been, hey, Robert, why don't you explain what a production manager <laughs> does well, that we actually never asked? <laughs> well, but, that our so, guests or, or people listening so, might not know. So, real quick, um, if you grew up ever, you know about his work. You know one of his movies. I, I, let me give you an example. I got to ask a question about my all-time favorite musical, which is the Blues Brothers. Guess who was the production manager of the Blues Brothers? Guess who's going to tell you a John Landis story? Yes. Guess who's going to tell you a Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom story? <coughs> We're also going to hear a Spaceballs story. He's going to talk about Mel Brooks. He's going to talk about a certain John Carpenter film. Uh, well, about that thing. It's that the thing. thing. Oh, the that best thing. John Carpenter film. And he's going to talk about the biggest movie of all time, Warning Sign. And okay. then after that, he'll talk about Return of the Jedi. Warning Sign. Return of the Jedi. Well, real quick. Return when of I the asked Jedi. him about Warning Sign, he laughed because you know why? No one asks about Warning Sign. Uh, but also, you're thinking. How could it get better? He worked on a Star Wars film, an Andy Jones film, Crap. Mel Brooks, Blues Brothers, all of that stuff. Oh, but we also have The Goonies, and we have Child's Play, War of the Roses, Starship Troopers! Starship Troopers, yes. He, he made a Paul Verhoeven film. Several of them. He made several. And he's going to tell you not only about... Starship Troopers and another one called Showgirls. We got a great Showgirls story, but he's going to talk you talk to you about the Paul Verhoeven films that weren't made. Did we mention Howard the Duck? Cause, no. Cause Howard the Duck. He worked on Howard the Duck. And he, <coughs> he, he said, "What's up, Howard the Duck?" Um, uh, it's a duck named Howard. All right. So back to my original premise. Why do we do this show? Because of that. A lot of people don't contact him to ask him for interviews, or maybe they do and we didn't know about it. But we want to hear him. We want to get the great stories. James often talks about a lot of times here, this is an oral history. Yeah, and these stories should not be lost. Uh, no offense meant to Mark Hamill. Mark Hamill, if you want to share this for us, that'd be great. Or but talk to us on the show. He can come on the show. Mark Hamill 
people have done tons of interviews with Mark Hamill, and they're good interviews, and Mark <coughs> Hamill is fascinating to talk to. Stop sucking up to Mark Hamill. Um, no, Mark Hamill doing the Joker. I mean, Mark Hamill is... is How many more times are you going to say Mark Hamill? Um, I'm sorry, Marky, as I like to call him. It's the in court. Um, but no, I, those are out there. Robert Latham Brown is a voice that's not out there. My goal for this, and I won't speak for the other two, is that Bonehead does give you something that nobody else is going to do. And it may not scabies? be something that is for everybody. No, tons of people have scabies. Look it oh, up. It's really I terrible. don't have them. Uh, you don't know that you have them. Um, anyway, <laughs> uh, you just have cholera. Uh, anyway. His voice is going. That's, I hope years after I'm gone, somebody is like, you know, I want to know. <laughs> it's a hell of a way to start uh, a sentence. Uh, I hope when I'm dead. You know, just three, four weeks there. from now. Just in the sentence there. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that people can still discover this stuff. Because I think, you know, we all love these films, but only so few of us actually get a chance to find out how they got made and what that making means and and who found these locations. And <coughs> who figured out how to transport a, a person who got injured on Jabba's barge during the making of a little movie called Blue Harvest. Mm. Uh, what was the full title? Blue Harvest? The, the Ultimate and Horror the, Terror. The, the Terror Beyond Imagination. Terror Beyond the Imagination. Um, which we, they released it with this fake title called Return, Return of the, of the Jedi. Jedi. Um, but, you know, he that's the story that we know. Who did safety for that film? Robert Latham Brown was one of the people that did that to make sure that this the production went well and that people were safe. This is why you need to watch this stuff. And this is a reason why we're better than most of our competition. Suck at competition. Actually, competition, in all fairness, uh, we're, we're glad that you're out there, too. We need all these voices. Go keep ahead, talking. Chad. No, I was just going to say, so tune in this Sunday. Tune out. No, it's it's tune in, drop out. What is it? I'm uh, Timothy Leary. I don't Leary. know you dirty hippies. Tune in. <laughs> tune Timothy in. Timothy Leary, sir. Tune in this doctor. coming Sunday. For an, an absolute wonderful interview with a fabulous man. Thank you so much, Bonehead. From Blues Brothers to Spider Man and beyond. Check it out. Beyond. Beyond. Woo. I believe I can fly. I'll cut Woo. it somewhere back there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Woo. You're not going to Actually, I'll probably cut it right yeah, there. Yeah. Don't, don't, don't end on a Robert Ke R. Kelly song. <laughs> is that R. Kelly? That is R. Kelly. Song. Oh, yeah, you can't leave hey, it on. Piss on that. Uh -huh.